Why is China afraid of Taiwan? Now, China has a rich culture, steeped in tradition, arts, food, temples and dragons. Sorry, what I was showing you there wasn't China, that was Taiwan. Mainland China is very different and we need to understand why it is that the same people who come from the same common ancestral roots only a few generations ago are in fact vastly different. So what's actually different? I mean, Taiwanese people are ethnically Chinese. In fact, most of them come from the Fujian province in mainland China. They speak the same language, enjoy the same food, follow the same traditions to an extent. But why is it that they're so different? I mean, as a traveler, I've been to Fujian and to Taiwan many times. In fact, my ex-wife, Beer Girl, is originally from Fujian, so I went there to visit family and, uh, you know, I've been there quite a lot and spent a lot of time there. Now, I certainly was, and you too will be amazed at just how different the two places are and how differently you'll be treated as a traveler in Fujian and in Taiwan. So let's look at some of the, the pros and cons, basically, of mainland China and Taiwan uh, based on my own experiences. Let's start out with charity. You know, Taiwan, when it comes to charity, as you walk around, you see a lot of posters and charity drives and people interested in charity, things like helping stray dogs or, you know, all sorts of things when it comes to education, things like that. However, mainland China is in fact the worst when it comes to charity. It has the lowest rate of charitable contributions in the world. You can look it up yourself. Go take a look on uh, Wikipedia or Google it or whatever, but also from my own observations, I find that in China, people are more interested in saving money, earning money, getting wealth because they've been poor for so long in, the, in recent history. No one's really interested in, in giving money out to charities, helping people, you know, in general when it comes to, to money anyway. It's a big, big difference and it makes a huge difference to society. Taiwanese people are also incredibly polite in comparison to mainland Chinese people. This is something that you will observe if you ever ask anyone for help. I'm going to give you a story. First time I went to Taiwan, I needed to change some RMB, you know, Chinese money, uh, renminbi, into NTD, New Taiwan Dollars, uh, because you can't just do it anywhere. Uh, you have to go to special banks that can help you out. So I thought I could just go into a bank and change the money. I walked into a bank on the street and I went up to the counter and I asked, hey, can I change this RMB into NTD? And they were like, sorry, we, we're not allowed to do that. You have to go to a special bank. There's a specific bank, a specific branch to do it. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, so where can I find this bank? The person I was talking to happened to be, you know, the bank teller, was a pregnant lady. She got up out of her chair. She walked me out the door. She said, follow me, by the way, speaking English, um, which is, Something you'll also notice in Taiwan is that the majority of people in the service industry can speak English, which is really nice uh, in comparison to mainland China, where almost no people do speak English, um, especially not in the service industry, because uh, service industry is more lower paid. So those people don't really have the incentive to spend all the money on uh, English uh, language training anyway. So she took me all the way outside. She took me to a bus stop. She waited with me until the right bus arrived, told me which bus to get onto. And, uh, you know, I, the whole time I was like, no, it's fine. I can go by myself because, you know, she's pregnant. She's massive. She's walking around with this big belly. I felt really bad. But she stayed with me, got me on the right bus and uh, told me where to get off. And then, you know, I did. I went and got the money changed. Whereas in China, countless times when I've asked for help, I'll go to a newsstand or I'll go to a hardware store. Or I'll go anywhere and I'll ask in proper Chinese. Do you have XYZ? Where can I find XYZ? And I'll simply get the Mayo wave. Hello. Hey. Do you have a Chinese bag? No. No Chinese bag. Which is like, I don't have. It's incredibly common. There have been situations where I'm asking for something that I can see on the shelf behind, but because they don't want to put the effort into understanding me, because I'm a foreigner, they'll just wave me away with a Mayo. Um, anyone who's been in China for any length of time has definitely experienced the mail wave. You know, things like asking for directions on the street from a security guard or something, and he'll just point down the road and say over there. Meanwhile, he's pointing in the wrong direction just to get rid of you because 
you know, there's a, there's a thing about uh, Chinese culture and mainland Chinese culture, I should say. There's this guo rezi thing, which means just pass the day, and people don't want hassle in their lives. And here comes a foreigner asking you for directions. You don't know the answer, so rather than admitting you don't know and losing face, or actually putting in the effort to try and find out, it's easier just to say like, go down that road. The foreigner disappears, and it's not your problem anymore. This is real life stuff that I've experienced. Okay, so this is just one of the things. Taiwanese people on the street that you meet in the 7-Elevens, wherever you go, are far more polite than people you'll meet in the same situations in mainland China. That's not to say that mainland Chinese people aren't polite at all and they aren't hospitable, because of course they are, but just in a different way. And it's very apparent. For a communist, socialist, country, whatever you want to try and label China, which it, it isn't really. Um, China doesn't actually have very good social programs. When it comes to things like healthcare, for instance, you still have to pay for healthcare in China. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, it's cheap. Granted, it's cheap, but it's a hassle. Uh, all these kind of social programs are either non-existent or they're very lacking. Whereas in Taiwan, which is a democracy, they have fantastic social programs, free healthcare, education, you know, all sorts of things which really end up helping people. Of course, you have to pay a, a higher tax. And that's something that uh, I found in mainland China as well, is that the, the, the way people are taxed, it's, it's, well, it's something for another video. But what I'm trying to say is that in Taiwan, the healthcare system works. A lot of these social programs really work very well, whereas in mainland China, they don't. The wealth gap is another thing. A lot of people don't realize this, but in Taiwan, the sort of uh, average salary is almost triple, or in many cases, more than triple that of people in mainland China. And this is, of course, all adjusted due to the fact that you've got a massive population in mainland China. Taiwan is relatively small. It's an island. And this is an excuse that you'll hear from a lot of mainland Chinese people as to why Taiwan is better in a lot of ways. They say, oh, it's because it's a smaller population. But I call absolute nonsense on that because you're dealing with the same people, you're dealing with the same traditions, the same cultures, and if they just adopted the same uh, models that Taiwan had, the whole of you know, mainland China could be the same. I mean, come on, America is the same size as China. They managed to pull it off. So it's not about you know size and population and that kind of thing. It's more about the systems that are in place. Anyway, like I was saying, you've got this mas massive, <clears throat> sorry, massive wealth gap. And this causes a lot of issues. You know, when you have in Taiwan this very narrow wealth gap, you tend to find a more stable society, less theft, less scamming, things like that, because you don't have this underclass of poor people who are resentful of the um, upper sort of richer people. You don't have them feeling justified trying to steal and knock off or scam from the people who are wealthy because everyone's almost the same. And I've seen how a large wealth gap can destroy a country. I mean, where I'm from, South Africa, that's pretty much what ended the place, is this massive wealth gap. That's why it is lying in the sort of burning, smoldering ruins that it is today. So what caused this massive difference between Taiwan and mainland China? It's very simple. There was a civil war. The nationalists fled to Taiwan. The communists took over the mainland. When the nationalists fled, they didn't only just take their culture and traditions and history with them, they actually took a lot of historical artifacts. Mainland China even calls Taiwan their treasure island. And what happened was they took all these cultural relics and thank God that they did because if those had not been taken to Taiwan, they would have been destroyed. In fact, any cultural relics from China that were taken out of China, whether it be during the colonial days, due to trade, theft, no matter what in the past, we can absolutely be grateful and thankful for that because most of those would have been destroyed during these like, disastrous policies of the communists during the Cultural Revolution and the Great Leap Backwards. There's no other way to put it. The CCP took over mainland China and they put into place these policies that led to the wholesale destruction of Chinese culture, history, the relics, morals, tradition, everything wiped up because they were trying to copy the Soviet Union and they wanted China to be something like the Soviet Union 2.0. Mao Zedong took over and said, we need to get rid of the four olds. We have to get rid of the, the old China, the old ways of thinking, the old traditions. 
he wiped it out. He got intellectuals and he paraded them around, put them in concentration camps, had them killed. He encouraged peasant farmers to have more children in order to bolster uh, you know, the population, which led to them having to reverse that and put the one-child policy into place. That completely destroyed the culture. So why is it that the CCP is so scared of Taiwan? It's pretty simple. The CCP is scared of Taiwan because Taiwan is the legitimate carrier of true Chinese tradition and values. And mainland China is simply a watered down, hollow place following outdated, draconian, Western communist Marxist rhetoric mixed up in a kleptocratic, opaque and corrupt dictatorship. In other words, why settle for bran flakes when you can have deluxe, marshmallow-infused, chocolate-coated, gold-plated Count Chocula? To round this off, I'd like to answer one final question. Why is it that people get fired every time they show a map of China, but they forget to include Taiwan in the map? Or why is there such a hoo-ha whenever this happens? Because the CCP is jealous. They want to claim the history, the tradition, the culture, which they chose to destroy and leave behind. They realize their mistake, but they can't admit it. And so want to almost as if by osmosis, absorb Taiwan's tradition, culture, and society, and claim that it was theirs all along. Now I've seen China, the China that I love, which was opening up and trying to adopt uh, some of their old ways and some of the old traditions, like Taiwan, you know, they look to Taiwan as, uh, as an example of how China could be. I saw this happening before my eyes. During the 14 and a half years I was living in China, China was opening up, starting to become wholesome again, starting to embrace its true cultural heritage. That unfortunately, in the recent three, four, five years, started to change. Uh, Xi Jinping has been kind of goading on this nationalism. He's putting forward his Xi Jinping thought and morality and inherit the red gene and all this nonsense that's going on at the moment, which is very counterproductive. And moving back to this whole idea of the Soviet Union 2.0 again, there is, however, some hope. I do have Chinese friends, especially younger Chinese friends, who want China to be the way it used to be. And I'm talking before the CCP. I'm talking before this nonsense, the real rich China, the rich culture, the rich history, the rich morals and values. There are certain people out there who want that. And I would like you to check out one of them. He's a friend of mine. He's a very courageous young man. His name is Simon Yu. Here's a link to his channel. If you want to get a very good idea of what a mainland Chinese, a reasonable mainland Chinese man with his own mind and his own thinking has to say, please check him out. Go to his videos and leave a little Serpents A Day sent me in the comments. Uh, he's a fantastic chap and he deserves our support. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has answered some questions. Remember that Taiwan, a lot of people get confused. They, you say Taiwan, they think you're talking about Thailand or something. No, Taiwan is its own fantastic place. Taiwanese people are awesome. Taiwan is one of the best democracies in the world. <laughs> You've got to check it out. If you haven't been there, I suggest going there. It's a beautiful place, amazing food. You'll absolutely love it. Anyway, until next time, you know the drill. Just like my friend Simon Yu, stay awesome. Oh, and don't forget, Every single Friday, you can watch another Serpent a Day right over here. Every single Wednesday, Lao 86, and of course, most importantly, ADV China every single Monday. And we have a podcast. See you next time.